Volition America is today's podcast sponsor, and Volition America isn't a brand. It's a movement of patriotism, unity, family, and freedom of choice. Volition America is strategically aligned with brands and influencers that live the mission at their core. Brands like Puma, Cobra Golf, and Luminox Watches. Volition America actually donates 13% of every single one of those sales to Folds of Honor to help provide families of fallen U.S. soldiers. You can go to volitionamerica.com to check out some of their clothes, their hats, their golf clubs. They're all unique collaborations. Thank you, Volition America, for sponsoring this episode. Enjoy the show. Arise, champion! This is the world-famous Steve Weatherford Show, where each week we bring you stories, messages, and guests to create massive breakthroughs in your life. Somebody say greatness! This show has been strategically designed to accelerate you. Call a friend and tell him Steve Weatherford is home. What's up, friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show. And I'm not sure when you're listening to this, but there's never a bad time in you leveling up in your ability to pursue and achieve your goals. And so I'm creating this the day after Christmas and releasing it several days before the new year. And the reason that I'm doing this is I want to, I want to challenge every single person that's listening to this, no matter when they're listening to this. And I want to start it out with, with a quote from, from a man named Viktor Frankl. And that quote goes, when a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. And the reason I feel like that resonates so deeply with me is I was a guy that used to get distracted by pleasure. And I know the reason why is because I didn't know and I wasn't really clear on what my meaning and my purpose was. And that's also why five, six years ago, I didn't necessarily think about killing myself. So I wouldn't say I had suicidal thoughts, but I wondered, what is this life all about? And Does my existence even matter? Six years ago, I did not have a deep meaning and I did not know what my purpose was, but I know what it is today. And so what I want to share with you is I want to share with you how to go pro in your goal mastery, how to go pro in achieving your goals. And before I I can help you, I want to share with you what five different categories that you could fit into. And there's no shame and there's no guilt about saying, hey, man, that's me. Because before you can grow, before you can achieve any type of competency or uh, capability, you really have to have awareness to where you're at, right? Like a, a, a genuine, humble awareness to where I'm at based upon what's happened in the past. Because what happens in the past doesn't have to predict my future, However, it can give me some feedback for where I failed. And so these are the five different categories that you could fit into. There's JV, there's varsity, there's college, there's the pros, and then there's all pro. You and I want to be all pro, right? What's the JV team? I'll give you an example of of what I believe a JV player is. The JV player is a guy that around this time of year might decide what his New Year's resolutions are. And some examples might be, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to quit smoking. I want to quit watching porn. But with New Year's resolutions, typically people don't go to the next step. And the next step would be actually creating a strategy and a plan. And also New Year's resolutioners are very famous for not having accountability. It's kind of like a hope, a wish, a want on January 1st, not backed up with accountability, with tribe, with mentorship. So that would be the JV team. And that was me for sure. I can't tell you how many years that I wanted to stop taking pills. You know, there's a lot of Januaries that rolled around three Januaries in a row where I knew that I wasn't necessarily taking pain pills to help with an injury anymore. I was taking them because they helped me to feel better. And I was stuck in a, in a, in a hamster wheel of, there was a period of time where I was smoking weed to go to sleep, taking Percocet pills to feel happy, and then taking Adderall to have energy and to get things done. 
I was a mess. And, and I was on the JV team. I was hoping, wishing, and wanting that these self-sabotaging techniques and habits would leave my life. What's the varsity? So I don't know if you connect with the JV team. I think to a degree, most all of us can, can fill JV, at least in one or two different areas of our life. And then what about varsity? You know, what constitutes you as being like a varsity goal pursuer? I would say instead of having re resolutions, you have goals, right? And, and you might even have a plan for those goals. But typically the varsity players, and I was on the varsity, you know, in order for you to go to, you go to, to all pro, you got to go varsity, you got to move your way up. And so I remember when I was on varsity and varsity to me is having one or two year end goals and actually coming up with a game plan from January all the way to December, that's going to help you to achieve that. And, and you might even have a coach too. Like I've, I've got three coaches right now. And I believe in investing in the area that you want to grow. But to me, I was on varsity because I would have year end goals that would have pretty much everything to do with me, like a physique goal or a finance goal. I don't know if that resonates with you, but if that resonates with you, it's okay. You're on the varsity. How do we like, how do we get out of the varsity and, and into big time college? Well, to me, the biggest difference between varsity and big time college players are they have a plan for not one or two areas. They have a plan for four areas. And I believe that every man has foundational columns that their life is built on. It's your faith. It's your finances. It's your relationship. And it's your health, a.k.a. your fitness. So to keep things very simple, in order for you to get off of the varsity and, and get into high ranking college, you got to get clear in four areas. What is my goal for the end of this year? And then to come up with a game plan for every single area. And then from you creating the game plan, now it's time for you. And maybe you do this while you're coming up with that game plan. But if you get a goal for all four areas of life and you're having some, some struggles in coming up with that game plan, that's a great time for you to get a mentor or to get a tribe, right? And I'm not saying you always have to pay for that. There are times that you can serve your way into relationships and serve your way into a room. And if you're not a part of a great church, I recommend you find a great church because most great churches have great men's ministry, right? And that's a great place for you to find mentorship or to find tribe. And that's how you get from varsity into elite college. And how do, you, how do I get out of college, man? And how do I graduate myself up to the pros? Well, I wrote down some notes here. And not only do you have to have clarity in those four areas, like what do I want one year from now? And then reverse engineering, who do I need to get alongside in mentorship? And who do I need to get alongside in tribe? that will help me create the strategy and have the accountability and get the encouragement and, and get the, the firm uh, brotherhood that, that that brings to you, that's not enough. Now you've got to, now you've got to predicate those one-year goals off of a 10-year vision, right? And that's really what gets you from the college to the pros because I was one of those guys that every January it would roll around and part of what created my feeling of hopelessness and like, does any of this stuff really matter is because I kept year, living my life 12 months at a time. And so I would get to the end of the year, some of the goals I would achieve and some of them I didn't, I would recalibrate and I would start the system all over again, living 12 months at a time, but not concisely leading in any type of direction. So if you want to get out of the college, if you want to get out of college, you want to go to the pros, stop living your life 12 months at a time and start to live your life one year at a time that is moving you ultimately in the direction of where you want to be one decade from now, right? So that's going to require you, when you listen to this, it's going to require you to spend some quiet time. It might require you having some conversations with your wife if you're married. And what do you want in 10 years? 
what do you see what do you see our marriage looking like in 10 years what do you see your relationships with your kids looking like in 10 years what do you see your health looking like in 10 years what do you see your generosity level what do you see um how do you see you you using the treasures aka the resources that god has given you how do you see yourself using those right if you've got dreams and aspirations for 10 years from now and you can get really clear on what those are man it gives you a new sense of urgency and it gives you a new sense of clarity and significance that it doesn't really matter. Really, it stops me from comparing myself to other people. Because if you're living 12 months at a time, you're really calibrating how well you're doing based upon how, how well are other people doing inside of that same time period. But if you're working towards an ultimate 10-year vision, you're not comparing yourself to people to your right or your left or people on social media because you know that they are not working towards what you're working towards. And it has gotten me out of the rat race. It's gotten me out of college and into the pros to get really clear on what I believe I want my life to look like 10 years from now. So how do we go from pro to all pro? And I, I played in the NFL for 10 years and there was only one time that I made it onto the Pro Bowl ballot as an alternate. So I know how hard it is to be the best of the best in the world at a specific skill. So in order for us to take something that's really hard to achieve and squeeze the ultimate out of it, that's why I started with the quote from Viktor Frankl. Because what he ultimately did with his life is he studied, he was an Austrian psychiatrist that, that lived through the Holocaust. And through his experiences, living through some awful, awful time period on the earth, he saw his, his mother die. He saw his father die in concentration camps when he was alongside of him. He saw both of his sisters die. He experienced a lot of despair. And, and that's actually what creates, and he went through a lot of suffering, that's actually what creates depression, right? It's when we experience despair with no meaning because that's suffering with, with no vision, with no purpose. And so how do we go from pros to all pro? Well, I, I believe it also, um, foundationally, it's getting really clear in those four areas, but not just in one year, not just in 10 years. I believe, based upon the Holy Bible, that when, when our bodies die, our spirit will go to heaven. And before we go to heaven, we'll actually meet an angel that's got a book. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And that Lamb's book of life, if we've repented of our sins and received Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, our name will be written in the Lamb's book of life in Jesus' blood, which means it can never get taken out. And once we see our name in there, we'll go and we're going to have a meeting with God in the throne room. And God is going to ask us, Steve, what did you do with the time, the talents, and the treasures, and the temple that I gave you? And I want my response to God to say, I wasn't perfect, but I did it all to bring you the glory. And I'm believing that God is going to say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. He's not going to say, hey, really great job, really motivational, inspirational evangelist. He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. In order for him to say faithful that's going to require me not doing it for a weekend, not doing it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Faithful means every day. Faithful is so much more than consistent. And so in order for that to happen, we have to have a lifetime vision, not a 10-year vision. That to me, what I just described to you, that's my lifetime vision, is standing before the creator of the universe, the one that created you and created me and put specific gifts inside of you and gave you a specific amount of time on the earth, and gave you a specific amount of resources and relationships. Did you do it? Did you take those things and build your own kingdom? Because for 36 years, I'm 41 years old now, for 36 years, I built my own kingdom, and it was so dissatisfying. I won championships. 
I made money. I was on TV all of the time. I knew a ton of people and a ton of people knew me. But it was one of the most empty moments of my life living through that season because everything was about me. And because I never really allowed anyone to fully know me, I always made up in my mind if they knew the dirty little secrets about me, they could never love me. And so my entire life was a costume party. And so I'm creating this podcast right here, right now in December, not so you can have some really great tools and tactics to start 2024 with so you can achieve everything that you want to achieve in 2024. No, I'm creating this podcast so God can accomplish everything that he wants to accomplish through you. I want you to take the power back by surrendering to God. That is, that is the, the ultimate X factor to go from JV all the way to all pro. You don't have to take these things through measures. If you realized during this podcast, you're like, man, I'm freaking JV, man. Like, I only have New Year's resolutions and I don't have any plans. And if you're wondering what your purpose or meaning in life is, I'm going to tell you right now. It's to love God more than you love yourself. And it's to love your neighbors more than you love yourself. That's scriptural. That's actually, a lot of people don't realize that's actually the royal law is to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And so I've realized that through my pursuit of life, part of life is discovering what your gifts are, right? And I used to think discovering what your gifts are so you could live a comfortable and a happy life. God is not calling you to comfortable. God is actually calling you to suffering, suffering with his significance. And God is not calling you to be happy. God is calling you to worship him. Through worshiping him, you will achieve joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, kindness, self-control. And most of all of those, it says in scripture, is love. And that's ultimately what we all want to experience. And so... I'm praying and believing that this short podcast episode will help you to identify where you're at, whether or not you're on JV or you're a guy that's on varsity. That's like, man, I only have like one year goals or, or you're a guy that's, that's in the pros and like, man, I actually know what my 10 year vision is, but I don't know that it's in line with my lifetime vision. And I want, I want everything that I'm doing every day. I want it ultimately to lead towards a, an incredible interaction. The first time that I meet God. Because here's the deal. I know every single one of us is going to come face to face with God. And the reason that I'm creating this content on this podcast is so you can live the greatest life that God is calling you to live. And when you step through the gates to meet God for the first time, you step into the throne room. You're prepared for that, right? I, I don't want any of my friends or any of the people I have an opportunity to speak into to not know what this thing is all about. And so if you're listening to this podcast, we're going to pray. But if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, man, like this totally makes sense to me, but I'm not, I've gone to church and, and I don't even really know if like my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. You and I are going to pray a simple prayer right now. And maybe this is the first time that you've ever repented of your sins and asked, and asked God to forgive you and invited Jesus into your heart. And you only have to do that one time. That's why it's written in Jesus's blood. We're going to pray that prayer, but you might be listening to this podcast and you're like, man, I know that it's time for me to rededicate my life the same way that five years ago, Steve rededicated his life because I gave my life to Jesus when I was 11 and that's when he became my savior. But when I was at 36 years old and I was at the end of, of the kingdom that I could build and I realized it was nothing. That's when I rededicated my life and Jesus became not just my savior, but he became my Lord. So I'm going to pray that prayer. No matter where you're at, I want you to give your life to Jesus And I believe that when you give everything to Jesus and you surrender, that's actually when you take the power back. Because I lived a long time when the power was outside of myself. I was working for the victory. And here's the deal. I won a lot of victories, but I lost a lot too. And I want you to know right now that you get to stop working for victory And you get to start working from victory because Jesus has already paid the price. So just repeat these words after me. It will be a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins and all of the times I've missed the mark. 
I ask that you would forgive me. I ask that you would take my trauma, my mistakes, my addictions. I ask that you would take them away and in exchange that you would give me forgiveness, that you would give me a new heart, that you would give me a new mind, and that Jesus, the perfect son of God, could come into my heart and make me brand new. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, angels are in heaven right now and they're rejoicing. And there's a huge angel that's dipping his pen in Jesus' perfect blood and he's writing your name in that book. And if you've rededicated your life the same way that I did almost five years ago, it was four years and 11 months ago, if you're doing that same thing, I want you to dedicate the next year of your life the same way that I did. And I said, God, I believe that you're going to take away some impulses and take away some shame and some guilt that I can't justify. But for the next year, I'm going to study your word and I'm going to do everything that I believe that I'm called to do. And in that pursuit in this year, God, would you heal my heart? And God, for the things and some of the memories that are in my mind that are still there, God, I ask that you would renew my mind over this next year. And God, if you can renew my mind and you can heal my heart in this next year, I will give you everything that I have. And during that year, it took about seven months. And I woke up one morning and I realized I wasn't going through a sequence or a checklist of following God. I realized that I was pursuing him because of his goodness. And so I don't know where you're at in your walk with God, but I know that he's faithful. I don't know where you're at in your walk with God, whether or not shame and guilt may be t tormenting you and the mistakes that you've made in the past. I believe that right now, if you prayed that prayer, that you've been forgiven of him. But I also believe in promises from the Bible, like Romans 8, 28, that, that says that God will use all things together for our good, all of the things from our past, he'll use them together for our good, for those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. If you prayed that prayer, I know that you love God. You've just declared it. And I know that you're called according to his purpose because if you have breath in your lungs, that means that God has a plan for your life. So thank you for listening to this show. If you're listening to this show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I would love it if you would leave us a review that helps us grow and reach more people. And if you're listening to or watching this on YouTube, I would love for you to share some comments. I'm going to go back through about two or three days after this releases and answer those. And I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on the post notifications because every Wednesday we release a podcast that's not fluff. It's not fluff. It's not entertainment, man. These are resources I believe that will help you to live your greatest life according to God in your faith, in your family, in your finances, and also in your fitness. We'll see you guys next week. This week's episode is brought to you by Oxfit XS1. What's an XS1? It's without a doubt the most advanced and sophisticated exercise platform that I've ever seen. I actually have this exact unit in my home. The Oxfit XS1 blows my mind because of the capability and the durability. This is an at-home fitness platform that is industrial enough for me to max out my squat, my bench, and my deadlift with a real barbell in my hands. And it also has radical features like a rower, a ski erg, and live fitness classes on a massive three-foot touchscreen display. For more information, go to oxfit.com. And thanks for listening to the Steve Weatherford Show.